I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I host this episode with my partner, Johnny D. How you doing today, my yes, friend? Yes, I'm going great. I'm going great. And you know what? Yeah. We have a special guest today. But oh, uh, yes. a special guest from uh, from Power Rangers, if I remember. Yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, we're going forward uh, with, uh, let me introduce yourself, uh, Mrs. Katrine Sutherland. Are you doing today? Good, thank you. How are you? Uh, this is awesome that you accept our invitation. Honestly, we know that you are very busy uh, with uh, a couples of comic cons and uh, individual individual uh, projects. So uh, we're going forward with some questions. So go in, my friend. Today. Yeah, of course. Thank you, uh, Johnny. Uh, okay, uh, Mrs. Sutherland, how was your childhood in uh, Sydney, uh, Australia? I had a very charmed childhood. I always tell my kids that. Um, I was raised about an hour and a half north of Sydney in a, in a beach community called the Central Coast. Okay. Um, my parents owned, um, they were in the building industry, they owned a tiling business. And um, I was the youngest of four kids, but my father's only child. And um, yeah, I just had a wonderful, you know, opportunities. My parents worked really hard and gave me so much um And I'm, I'm truly grateful for that. And then when I was a, a teenager, I went to a high school in um, Sydney. Uh, it was a performing arts high school. So I got to kind of hone in on my, you know, dancing and, and singing. And then I discovered acting and that the rest is history. I was modeling and doing all of that stuff. And then um, 20 years old, I was brought over to America and had a whole new experience. So um, growing up in Australia was, was a, a dream. It really was. Perfect. And when we were young, uh, uh, Benoit, um, there was three different things in my mind. There was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Ghostbuster, and, of course, Power Ranger. And this is awesome that you accept. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, and we can discuss all together because um, we... You, you made your debut, if my memory is good, in 1996. Uh, 95. For, 95, 95, sorry. Uh, for the episode of Seri, uh, Snowy River. Uh, how did you get recruited for uh, the role of, uh, of uh, the, during this episode? Yeah, Power Rangers? Are you talking about Power Rangers? Oh, uh, the, the, the series Snowy River. I actually didn't do that. That was That's a mistake on IMDb. Okay. It was actually Gabriel, okay. Gabriella um, oh. Fitzpatrick that was in, um, was oh, in that. No, I'm I didn't out. do I'm that. Sorry. That's okay. okay. It's okay. We worked hard, but uh, we can. <laughs> Wikipedia's fault. Well, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would accept the credit, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, why did you decide to become an actress? Um, I, I just... My parents said, you know, from the age, you know, very young age, I was always like performing for them and putting on little plays. My brother played the guitar and he and I would do little concerts. And um, and then I, you know, in elementary school, started doing school plays and musicals. And it was just something that just brought me so much joy. And um, so I, I started, um, you know, just pursuing it further. I started ballet when I was five and then I ended up you know, doing other dance styles. And that's what took me to that performing arts high school. But um, I just, I just love the arts. I love being able to play different characters and being able to, to be, um, make an impact on somebody in a positive way, make people think about things. I just really enjoyed that. Um, and of course, when, you know, if you become successful, I was like, really wanted to have um, a positive impact on the world and use my voice in that way. Um, so I feel very grateful that I got that opportunity at a very young age. So, 
OK, Mrs. Sutherland, uh, what job would you have if you hadn't been an actress? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I actually, I would love to have done something um, with children, like um, I, a pediatrician or um, or a teacher or something, something working with kids. I always loved, okay. loved working with children. Um, so something in that field. I'm very fascinated with um, the human body and the functionings of the body. So maybe something in the PT world or something like that. So, awesome. yeah. Yeah. And uh, we are talking about uh, that you uh, you love children. So uh, I saw that you created and you released a book called uh, The Boys Whip His Heart on His Sleeve. Yes. To kill, of course. And uh, where did you find the inspiration for writing this book? Um, I have two kids and um, I used to love to read to them when they were little and the books that always jumped out to me were the ones that like the giving tree or books that had like a moral message that was um, really fun to read as a parent, but also um, was fun for the child. And, okay. um, and so I, um, oh, my knuckles just cracked, excuse me. Um, no problem. No problem. <laughs> um, no problem. I have this, the, 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 the same uh, Thing. It's so. terrible. It's a Me terrible habit. Yes. Um, <laughs> so um, my son, um, I have a, a daughter and a son, but my son has a very big personality and he's, um, he, we call him the boy with the heart on his sleeve. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this is a great idea for a story. So I started writing it down. And then I met a, uh, the illustrator at a convention and um, I just, I loved how he brought it to life. Um, so it's about a little boy that his heart is bigger than his body and he kind of doesn't know how to control his emotions and guard his heart. And so he kind of goes through the world um, clumsily, I guess, and um, he gets hurt and his heart begins to shrink and um, he has to discover through, you know, the voice within God um, of who he really is, where his identity really lies. And then his heart begins to grow and he learns how to share his heart in a healthier way. So um, I've had a lot of parents that have children with special needs or autistic mm -hmm. children that said yeah. it was really helpful for them, children that have been bullied, because um, ultimately it doesn't matter what anybody says about you but God and um, or and, and what you believe about you and being authentically you, not what everybody else tells you to be. So... Uh, we uh, understand that perfectly the the situation because my wife's working with artist uh, person and uh, with uh, different uh, kids and stuff like that. So and uh, when uh, her, na her yes. name is Kat. Yes, exactly. And oh, really? Is, yeah. <laughs> and um, and also uh, I have two little children. My, my first uh, child child called uh, Lorianne. She has uh, seven years old and uh, she loves Power Rangers. And uh, she was very disappointed because uh, when I when I spoke with him and I said, uh, I have an interview with the, the pink Power Rangers. Yeah. Sure, she sure. Says, uh, she says, uh, oh, do you know if she comes at home? So, I don't know, that, that's impossible, but uh oh. she has all your toys oh. uh, at home and she <laughs> loves you so much and i have oh. a, another uh uh brand new uh baby called edward congratulations has, uh <laughs> thank you so much uh, we don't sleep but it is what yes. it is my friend <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the yes. sleep deprivation is real. I don't know if you saw on a social media, Nakia has become a grandmother, the oh. most beautiful grandmother that ever lived. Um, but she, yeah, she's her, her kids are adjusting to okay. oh, the, that's hard the, to get used to this new schedule and new behaviors. Yes. But it's and temporary. Has, it's only uh, for a few months. And he has <laughs> uh, 18 months. So uh, yeah. He's Aww. awesome. Awesome. He had a lot of live, a lot of energy, and yeah. when it's time to sleep, we we'll just drop drop him uh, directly on the bed, and he sleep automatically. He's out. <laughs> that's great. Yes, that's, that's great. Tire him out. <laughs> for parents, if you know what I mean. So. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. man. Everybody knows uh, that you uh, you played the role of the the Pink Rangers. Uh, my my uh, question is: uh, How many uh, prospects? Uh, audition for the role of Cat Ellard in the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger series. Um, yeah, they, when Amy Jo decided she wanted to leave, they I I hear 
I mean, I don't know all the details, but I, I heard that they were auditioning in America and Canada. Um, and then they had filmed the first movie in Australia. And so um, they loved Australia. And then they thought, oh, maybe it'd be good to have um, someone international, someone that's very different. Um, so they auditioned in Australia and I didn't know anything about the show. I just knew it was for a children's show that filmed overseas in America. And that was my dream to go to Hollywood. So um, I had to do three auditions. Um, the first one was just a scene. The second one, they wanted to see a little bit of martial arts. And then the third audition was with the producer, Shuki Levy. And um, when I went for the third callback, they were, I think it was down to about five of us. They were all blonde. All the girls were blonde. So they were obviously looking for someone that was very different from Amy Jo. And um, I think they wanted to bring in an international flair to the show and have someone that the international fans could maybe connect to and someone a bit mysterious. And um, so, yeah, it was it was a really exciting moment. And um, I'm very grateful that they chose me. <laughs> um, so it was about I think I, I got a call like three weeks after the first audition. Okay. So it was a little bit of a process and then getting my visas and everything. It was it was uh, a very exciting big process. time. Yeah, very big process. When yes. you don't live in uh, in USA, uh, I imagine. So, uh, you're taught uh, about martial art. Uh, do you have martial art, martial art skills? Because um, a couple of times during series, uh, you you need a training. You need a training for uh, yes for that the series. Um, I was a dancer, actually. Oh, yeah. so Amy Jo was a gymnast. Twee was, um, I think she had been, uh, done a little bit of martial arts. Okay. Karen and I um, and Nakia were all dancers. Mm -hmm. So you just had to have some athletic ability, I think, and be able to pick up choreography. Because stunt fighting is very different from real martial arts. It, it, they mm -hmm. want it to look, you know, you wouldn't use that to defend yourself out in the real world. But um, we had amazing stunt doubles and our um, stunt coordinator coordinator and director um, Koichi was mm -hmm. amazing at kind of seeing what our skills were and tailoring things around that. Um, but when we got to Zio, we didn't do any um, any stunt fighting out of out of our suit. Um, so all of the all of the martial arts you see was um, was stunt doubles. And then they started to bring it back in turbo. And it was because you guys were all hitting each other. We were getting in trouble for yeah. causing violence. <laughs> And I'm uh, I'm wondering uh, when you are in full suit, uh, do you have figurant or or you you you, uh, you interpret your your own character? Uh, you mean, did we have a stunt double or? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. Do you have a stunt double? Yes, yes, we okay. all have stunt doubles. Mine okay. was actually a Japanese man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. That they um they would pad him and make him look, you know, feminine <laughs> and stuff, which is funny. Um, nice. but yeah, we we all had stunt doubles. Um, for any time you see us in the helmets, that is stunt doubles, and we would do the voiceover for it. Um, so. Yeah, it was it was so that they not they were using Sentai footage and then they started to bring in more um, American footage and filming second unit. We had first unit and second unit. So first unit was all of the stuff in the command center, the juice bar. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see us without um, our helmets was called first unit. And then second unit was all of the stunt fighting. So the monsters, Lord Zed and Rita, um, King Mondo, all, all of the villains footage and yeah. then all of the stunt fighting um, was was done on a second unit. So we were filming simultaneously. And the costume was just amazing. Uh, oh, really, yeah. really. And mostly the, the monster eel was just awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They brought all the monsters um, were from Japan. So they shipped all wow. of the monster costumes really? over. Yes, okay. so they smelled terrible. <laughs> ah, I imagine, I imagine. They were, oh. Um, but yeah, they used all the original um, monsters from from the Sentai footage. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay, uh, you you appeared in the Cell movie with uh, Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share us uh, this uh, wonderful experience? Yeah, that was an amazing experience. That was... Um, uh, Probably when did I film? That was probably that was like a couple of years after I left the show, actually, that I got that. Um, and it was 
it was a really um, big production, obviously, and big budget and all of that. So it was a whole new experience for me um, coming from Power Rangers. And Definitely. they treated me so well. Like after my the first day I shot was the scene where um, I'm dead, but they there was like ants crawling on my face. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but it's a really horrifying scene. Like I had to lay there and that is me. That was not a dummy or anything. I had to lay there with my eyes still and just completely still. Um, they had contacts in my eyes and I was watching the ants walk over my contact lenses. I was like, I had to go into this completely Zen meditation mode because it was so gross, Imagine but they sent me um, a beautiful bouquet of flowers and thanked me for being, you know, so such a trooper. Um, so it was a really great experience. The director was like a complete visionary and that was his first film. He'd done a lot of um, commercials and musical um, musicals, music videos, um, but this was his first like big budget film and he's got such amazing vision. Like you, it was like, Everything was such a spectacle on that movie. Um, and I worked a lot. I didn't work with Jennifer, um, but I worked a lot with Vincent D'Onofrio, who was okay. an amazing actor. And he was nice. really wonderful to work with, very respectful. Um, so it was it was a really cool experience. Hard, hard to film because it was it was a difficult topic. A lot of it was like very traumatic, but it was was really fun. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, about the Power Rangers, uh, can you tell us uh, about the late uh, Jason David Frank? Oh, yes. Um, that was a difficult a difficult weekend. That was the weekend before Thanksgiving, and Nakia and I were actually um, at a signing in New Jersey, and um, when we when we found out, so it was a really it was a really difficult time. Um, he'd been struggling a long time with with mental health, and obviously, as fans. You know, to his fans, he had one face and then we all knew what was going on underneath the surface. Um, and it's a reminder to everybody that, you know, celebrities, they, they are people. They have problems just like everybody does. And um, and so it, I know it was very hard for fans because he was such a hero and such a larger than life person. And um, it was really challenging for them to accept that he'd done that. Um So it's been it's been a lot of you know trying to he heal in the community and trying to keep that le legacy alive and um, you know he he made a, a beautiful impact on many people and mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to keep keep that alive for them um, and always if they want to talk about it we're here for them um, so it, it was it was a big big shock so okay. thank yeah. you for this the, the yeah thanks. this is super appreciated yeah. Uh, well, uh, do you have uh, any uh, upcoming uh, projects? Um, I have. I don't know if you know. I have a YouTube channel with Nakia. Um, Nakia okay. was my my Yellow Ranger on Zio and Turbo. Cool. Okay. Um, oh, and okay. she, we have a YouTube channel called Power Rangers Playback. We okay. started it. Um, That before, like at the beginning of 2020, before all the craziness of the pandemic. And the, the intention was that we wanted to just have a fun place for fans. Um, but when everything shut down, it became such a, a sense of community for everybody and it grew very big and it was such a fun thing for us to be able to pour back into the community because our fans give so much to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've continued it. It's been going now for three years and growing. And nice. um, we have congratulations. We have Thank you. We have interviews and skits and we have um, toy reviews and all kinds of fun things on there. Um, and her and I are best friends. So it has a lot of it's a very joyful channel. It's like we, we want it to be a place where it, people can laugh and have fun and reminisce. And it's got a lot of nostalgia. And um, yeah, so that that takes up a lot of our time. We have membership available on that, too. So we we have a lot of interaction with our members. And then I have a couple of other um, voiceover projects I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. Nikki and I have a couple of things we're working on as well. Um, so, yeah, lo lots going on, lots going on. I have a script I'm writing, which will get finished in the next. I've been writing it for 10 years, so we'll see if I okay. ever finish it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's so hard to get I'm such a procrastinator and I have to be in the right headspace I don't know if you're like that but to be creative I have to be in the right mindset I can't just sit down and write so I have to carve out time for that but yeah, yeah just before ending uh, we give you uh, an actor or actress names and in a short sentence uh, tell us about uh, something about uh, about them so uh, okay uh, Isha Campbell Aisha Campbell, um, sassy, um, fun, bubbly, sunshine. 
<laughs> awesome. Uh, Macaulay Culkin. Oh, adorable. Um, Home Alone. So such a classic. Um, Probably the best uh, the holiday best? movie. Uh, yes, of all I time. watch it every year. <laughs> that <laughs> and Elf. <laughs> and mostly when you have children. <laughs> yes, I love all of them. Yes. It's, it's a funny movie. Uh, and Catherine Sutherland. Oh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would I say about myself? Oh, I'm, I don't know. I'm blushing. Um, <laughs> um, compassionate. Um, intentional. Intentional. Um, joy seeker. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and for ending uh, my partner um, Benoit aka uh, Nostradamus Ben it's all about the French prophet try to predict the future of our guests so go ahead my friend okay uh, first of all Mrs. Sutherland thank you so much for the interview very appreciated you're welcome okay Okay, I predict to you uh, first uh, many, many success with uh, uh, your uh, YouTube channel with uh, the, the Yellow Ranger. Uh, the, yeah, the Yellow, Yellow Ranger. Ranger yes. yeah. And uh, you release the book probably in a few years. Uh, a documentary about your life uh, will be released. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Interesting. In, Austral okay. in Australian first. Oh, okay. Well, I will, I will, I don't know how interesting I am, but that would be cool. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you, you so much for your time. Uh, this is uh, an honor and privilege. We are very grateful that you can take 20 minutes with, with us. This is awesome. So thank you so much and have a You're great welcome. day, my friend. You too. Thank you 